Good morning, my dear. My name is Dr. Raven. I am from Krishna Institute of Medical Sciences, Karnataka. So today, my topic of discussion is MRI imaging of the synovial disease of the knee. So in this uh, first introduction, as we all know that knee is one of the largest and most complicated body uh, joints in the body, and this is synovium line joint. So synovial disorders often affect the knee joint, and there are common cause of mobility. So early imaging is highly important, and the is very helpful in the early detection to avoid the incidence of irreversible joint injury so what are the available investigations are like conventional radiography ultrasound and mri which will be helpful in the diagnosis and even in the follow up also so the aim and objective of my presentation is to determine and differentiate the uncommon synovial diseases associated with the knee joint so materials and methods in this uh, retrospective cross sectional study was performed Uh, of the synovial diseases in the uh, in our department, and MRI knee was performed with on Siemens 1.5 Tesla. And 19 cases of knee pain and swelling were uh, taken into our study, in which the um, infected synovial is rheumatoid arthritis, pigmented villonodal synovial is synovial chondromatosis, lipoma abscesa, synovial hemangiomas were identified. And first coming to rheumatoid arthritis, this is a common chronic and a progressive inflammatory disorder, primarily affecting the synovium. the main early feature will be the synovitis and it is a strong predictor for the future erosion changes so on the radiography you will be seeing bony changes when it is in the chronic surgery it states so in mr it will be mainly helpful to see the earlier or occult changes of ra so uh, what are the features of ra on mr so this is synovial hyperemia sinus formation uh, decreased thickness of cartilage and subchondral cysts and erosion and juxta articular bone marrow edema and joint deformities can also be seen in the rheumatoid arthritis So in the in our case now coming to our case in the T1 sagittal, PD sagittal, and PDFS sagittal, you uh, you could see that there is a diffuse synovial thickening along the synovium, which is more better evident on the PDFS. And in the PDFS coronal, you could see that there is a, a cartilage loss is there, cartilage loss is there in subcontal marrow edema. Uh, this patient afterwards went for synovial biopsy and it turned out to be rheumatoid arthritis. So in the uh the of the same patient you have we have also this uh, radiograph in which it was showing this bone erosion changes and uh, marginal osteophytes are also can be seen so next uh, common close differential for uh, the rheumatoid arthritis that is in or rheumatoid arthritis or inflammatory arthritis is infected synovitis in this patient we have another patient in which uh, it was a child which came with the patient complaint of knee pain and swelling And in this, you could see T1 sagittal, PD sagittal, and PDFS sagittal. You could see that this joint effusion was seen, and associated with diffuse synovial thickening. Diffuse synovial thickening was seen, all thing. And on post contrast images, you could see that there is uh, diffuse synovial enhancement, a bit post contrast enhancement, which was more evident on the axial scans. This patient turned out to be infected synovitis. So pigmented villonodal synovitis. This is benign process characterized by hyperplastic synovial proliferation either within the joint or along the tendon sheets and uh, within the bursa also can be seen. So wherever the bursa and tendon sheets that is lined by synovium will be affected with this with this pigmented villonodal mm -hmm. synovitis. So this is of two types: localized form and diffuse form. Localized form is most commonly seen and usually extra articular. So MRI typically shows mass-like synovial proliferation with lobulated margins. So signal characteristics. What are the signal characteristics? Are T1? It will be low or low to intermediate signal. And post contrast, it will be showing variable enhancement. On T2, low to intermediate signal with some areas of high signal will also be seen. And on GRE sequences, it will show blooming. That is main characteristic feature of pigmented villonodal synovitis. So in our case, now coming to this our case, PD sagittal, T1 sagittal. Uh, PD sagittal, you can see the hypo intense mass in the opus flat pad. And on T1 sagittal, you could see some other low signal mass in the opus flat pad. Same mass. And on PDFS, it is also low signal, and on PD sequence, it is showing uh, blooming. And in post contrast images, you can see that heterogeneous post contrast enhancement is seen. So these are the features of suggestive of localized pigmented villonodal synovitis. So next, this is MRI being performed, uh, which was showing ill-defined uh, nodular masses all around the knee joint. Uh, in the inter, even it was extending into the intermuscular plane also, which was not shown. Yeah, and here you could see that the PD sagittal, T1 sagittal, PDFS sagittal. You could see there is heterogeneously hyperintense mass 
in hyper intense areas also we did and it was showing rich blooming also here here it will be very blooming also and on post contrast it is a heterogeneous post contrast enhancement is afterwards patient went for arthroscopy and it turned out to be big blooming plus i know it is with joint effusion can also be seen which is seen in the suprapatellar region next is synovial chondromatosis synovial chondromatosis is a rare benign condition in which the synovium lining uh, develops chondral or osteochondral nodules so if it is osteochondral nodule it can be easily diagnosed on a radiograph as it is uh, bony but if it's a chondral lesion that is cartilage then it will be difficult uh, to, uh, to for us to diagnose on a uh, x so osteo mri can be helpful in this diagnosis although it may be it will be a non specific uh, features will be there like t1 hyper hyper t2 hyper will be there and it will be associated with joint effusion advanced cases generally will be associated with osseous joint around the knee joint and the symptomatology is often similar to that of a patient sampling with osteoarthritis next this one case t1 sedated t1 axial t1 coronal you are seeing a hyper intense mass in the hyper intense mass all around the knee joint here also you can see And as I mentioned, as a star mark here, this one is the bigger one, which was seen predominantly in the posterior aspect. And on PDFS, you are seeing that this is the hypointense, hypointense lesion, which is suggestive of uh, synovial chondromatosis. And this is of another patient, not of this patient. We were showing multiple uh, loose bodies in the in the knee. So this is suggestive of uh, osteochondromatosis, pre osteochondromatosis. Next, lipoma arthritis. Lipoma arthritis is a rare condition which is affecting the synovial linings with the frond-like uh, deposits of fatty tissue due to non-specific react to synovial proliferation. This knee joint is the most common site of involvement. Other joints will be like shoulder, hip, elbow, ankle, wrist. And MR is the modality of choice for this diagnosis. In this, there will be a frond-like synovial mass which will be a characteristic appearance of this associated with joint effusion. In T1, it will be high signal as we know that appears T1, T2 high signal. It will saturate on fat separate sequences. On the gradient echo sequences, we can see sometimes this fat fluid enters. So in our case, coming to our case, patient came with knee pain. Patient came with knee pain. In this, you can see there is a frond-like mass in the suprapatellar region, which was appearing hyper on T1, PD, and the hypo on PDFS. And on the post contrast, it was showing post contrast. It was showing heterogeneous post contrast enhancement. This is suggestive of lipoma arthritis. So next is synovial hemangioma. This is a rare benign vascular malformations that occur most commonly in relation to the joint. So most commonly this will be seen around the knee joint and sometimes associated with the flebolis also. In the MRI, it can be typically lobulated intraarticular mass will be seen. Sometimes the lobulations can be seen or sometimes diffusely can also be seen. So signal characteristics include T1 uh, it will be usually of intermediate signal and or ISO also sometimes and D2 it will be markedly hyper intense background. Uh, because of the cold blood within the vascular spaces, and sometimes if it is a high flow vascular malformation, so you could see the flow voids also. And on T1 post contrast, you could see marked enhancement. Even say later, here you could see uh, a iso intense mass which is in the uh, period two corpus uh, corpus recti, and in the PD it is also iso on T1, uh, hyper on PD, hyper on PDFS. And in the pre-contrast image, you could see there is T1 FS hyper, and on post-contrast, it was showing uh, slight and more and slight enhancement. And on post-contrast delayed fibrous, you will see rich enhancement, which is suggestive of low flow in a small formation, as it is being better well seen on the delayed images. So this is a case of synovial hemangioma. So based on this, uh, based on our uh, MRI features and synovial biopsy features and arthritic follow-ups. Now divided the patients into uh, based on the synovial pathologies. The most common pathology we found is the impact to synovitis, as we got the six patients and the uh, other least uh, class were like lipoma absence and synovial hemangioma, which were like one one case of each. The so next conclusion: this 19 cases were followed and segregated according to the MRI findings. Among them, six were of impact to synovitis, four were of rheumatoid arthritis. Four were of pigmented villonodular synovitis, three were of synovial chondromatosis, and each case of lipoma absence and synovial hemangioma. So, based on the my MRI features, if we are suspecting some synovial pathologies. What are the sequences we will be taking? Are T1, T2, or PD layer sequences, and even the gradient sequences and post contrast images also can be needed. Very helpful. So, in this MRI imaging is mainly helpful for modality. 
for the differential diagnosis, preoperative assessment, follow up of synovial disease. So, MRI along the synovial biopsy is the best possible diagnosis. So, based on this, we have prepared a diagnostic algorithm with thickened and irregular synovium, mass present, and mass absent. When masses are absent, periarticular erosions, subchondrosis, narrow edema, joint effusions, these are all there, then we have to suspect inflammatory or infective uh, pathologies. And if masses are present, solitary mass forming or multiple mass forming. If solitary mass forming, it will be like lipoma arbescence and localized uh, congenital villanotal synovitis. Uh, in lipoma arbescence, there won't be any loose bodies or bone erosions or blooming. But in uh, localized uh, pigmented villanotal synovitis, bone erosions, blooming and loose bodies can be seen. Multiple mass formings, you will be seeing diffuse uh, pigmented villanotal synovitis with blooming. In synovial chondromatosis, you won't be seeing any blooming. So, this will be associated with uh, uh, in without calcifications. These are my references. Thank you.